A topic that has started many an online argument. Should you have your dreadlocks started or maintained by a loctician? <music> to begin, for clarity, what I am referring to as a loctician is anyone that you are paying to start or maintain, anyone that you're paying to work on your locked hair. Uh, in different countries, in different locales, uh, the definition of a loctician may vary. In some places, uh, loctician is an official title that is earned through certification, uh, and education is required to be classified as a, as a loctician. In other places, it's a much more informal title. Here, I'm referring to anyone where you go to their place of business, whether it's somewhere that is dedicated specifically to dreadlocks, whether it's a salon where they do dreadlocks on the side, whether uh, you go to their house or they come to your house, it's just anyone that you pay money and they work on your hair. Um, so I don't really want to get into an argument as to what is officially a, a loctician in one place or another place. That's just the word I'm choosing to use for simplicity. So this topic uh, is the source of many an online argument. People have polar opposite views as to whether you should frequent a loctician or whether you should not. And I believe that this comes mainly down to how people view their own dreadlocks, uh, their own reasoning for locking their hair, and how they personally view the process of locking their hair. It varies greatly. Some people subscribe to a very specific view. They're locking their hair for this reason. They want to do this thing. This is why they're doing it. Other people have different views. And whether you should use a loctician or not, I think uh, it's it's often not that difficult to decide which you know side of this argument you come down on because you see these arguments and your reasoning for starting your dreadlocks is generally gonna line up with one of these arguments or the other. Um, I'm gonna lay out kind of the two sides, and I think you should be able to kind of find which side you fit down on. Uh, the arguments against um, using locticians for um, starting and maintaining dreadlocks, it generally comes down to um, dreadlocks can be formed entirely, naturally, for free, with no monetary investment at all. All. You can freeform dreadlocks and form them totally naturally by just having unlocked hair and leaving it alone. Uh, not conditioning and not brushing the hair and that hair will start to knot together. Uh, eventually, if given enough time, you will form dreadlocks naturally through this process and you're good to go. You don't need anyone to work on your hair. And uh, there are people that will subscribe specifically to this natural process. It's the reason they get into dreadlocks because they... they they want this experience, they want this entire natural process, they want them to form organically. And so, if you are using the services of someone who is going to go in and work on your hair, start it in a specific way, maintain it in a specific way, it will detract from this natural process, it is going to take away and you know, it, it would be therefore arguably an unnatural modification to this process and it would not be to the tastes of those who who you know that they don't want that basically slightly further over aside from free forming if you want to go in with an active starting method such as back comb uh, twist and rip whether you want to crochet again um, you, you don't need a professional to do this for you these are methods that can be carried out by an amateur there are guides online there are guides on this channel um, that will show you how to uh, back comb or twist and rip hair to start dreadlocks so it requires very little to no financial investment of your own. You are completely um, present. Present is uh, it's kind of a hand wavy term here because obviously you're present if someone else starts them for you, but you are a part of the process yourself uh, and you have control over uh, how your dreadlocks are started, what methods you use, um, what goes into or onto your hair. It's all in your hands, literally, or your friends, whoever is helping you. And some people will therefore shun the idea of a loctician because they want to be present and part of that process themselves. They for a number of reasons, may feel that they are more connected or more attached to the starting process then and there's a, a more emotional weight to it for them. It all depends on the reason, again, that they're getting into the dreadlocks, but 
they have that control, they can have whatever they want, it's entirely to their discretion. When you're doing these things, you're the free forming or starting them yourself, you have all this control and there's not a lot of money being changed hands. I mean, if you're free forming, it's free. If you're starting with an active starting method, it can be free if you're back coming or if you're gonna crochet, you need to pay for those tools and uh, usually you might need a friend to help you with the back of your head, so maybe you need to bribe them if you're, <laughs> maybe uh, your friendship is strong enough, but maybe you need to you know, tempt them to help you with that. It, it's hard work, but it doesn't cost what um, a professional will charge because you know it's hard work. If you wanna do it yourself or your friend wanna help you out, that's fine. If you're gonna get someone else to do it for you, it's hard work, it is going to cost you. So in my experience, those are some of the main arguments that people will use against uh, using a loctician. It's you are taking away from natural processes if you want to go freeform. You are detached from the process somewhat if you're not starting them yourself with a freeform or an active starting method. You don't have as much control. Um, you're kind of in the loctician's hands, so if they want to use a specific method or if they're going to use a product that you don't like uh, and you aren't in a position to dictate whether a product is used, you could end up with a product being used. I think there's a strong disliking to locticians because uh, often, I mean, historically, uh, historically sounds like hundreds of years ago, but in the past and, and even now, um, locticians will be prone potentially to using waxes and gels on dreadlocks to give them more of a finished look at the start. And um, the consensus these days is to very much avoid waxes and gels. My personal opinion is to not put any wax on dreadlocks. So there's kind of this bad taste in some people's mouths that if you're gonna visit a loctician, you're gonna end up paying a lot of money for work that, um, you could have done yourself and potentially you're gonna end up with a method or products caked in your hair that you didn't want and you've paid for that. So I, I, I can understand why some people are against locticians because of the above reasons. They wanna be involved, they wanna have the control and they don't wanna pay for someone else to potentially do something they don't want to their hair. But on the other hand, there are arguments for why you should visit a loctician, or shall I say, there are arguments that could compel someone that are visiting a loctician or having work done by a loctician is right for them. And I think that the main thing is gonna come down to experience. If you're gonna free from your dreadlocks, I think that's a completely separate aside. Uh, you know, I, I think that if you're gonna free from your dreadlocks, that is a decision that you've made and then you're kind of detached from the argument somewhat because people either wanna free from their dreadlocks, they want that experience, they want their hair to look that way, they wanna experience that process that is only attainable through free form and the look that's only attainable through free form. And if you want that, then that, that, that is like dead set you're detached from any other argument there because it's kind of one way or the other. Um, with people who are on the fence, I guess the people that are gonna go with back comb or twist and rip or crochet or people that are gonna be uh, not subscribed specifically to neglect methods because they want maintenance done. And so the upside to having someone who is a professional is experience. While you can back comb yourself, while you can twist and rip yourself, while there are um, tutorials online which will show you that you, how, how to do it, there, there's a skill involved. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not super easy. I've started dreadlocks for people, but I will not ever refer to myself as a professional in that department. Do the dreadlocks work? Do they survive? Do they mature? Yes. Uh, is it super effective when I do it? Um, is it efficient when I've done it? No, it, it takes me a lot longer. Are, are they as strong or as tight as someone that does it as their full-time job? No, I don't have that experience. Um, it, experience comes from doing it over and over, back combing, heads after heads after heads of hair, twist and ripping, hundreds of dreadlocks. The more you do, the better you get. You'll notice this yourself even if you start your own dreadlocks. If you start your own dreadlocks, if you start twist and ripping on one side and you work around to the other, by the time you get to the other side, you are a lot better than when you began. So you can 
negate that entire learning curve if you want and, and have a professional do it for you at the start. Their experience will mean that when they're starting, they will know what they're doing from the first dread. They will know that they're doing it right. There's no learning curve and um, you can end up with dreadlocks that are more efficiently made so they can be faster and um, they are more uniform across the head because um, they know how to section evenly. They know the sectioning pattern they should use and it's something that only comes from experience and sort of training in that area from doing it over and over again. I would say it's hard work having started dreadlocks. I can tell you that I, it's not something that I personally enjoy doing. The reason, you know, people complain that sometimes locticians are expensive, it's going to vary a lot from place to place. I've had a video um, on my channel that's how much the dreadlocks cost and in the comment section for that some people have paid literally 10 to 20 times more than other people. It varies so much depending on who's doing the work, different countries, different locations. But I can say that it is not easy work. There are some prices that are obviously unrealistic that people have paid but uh, I think that a lot of people get a good deal with work that's done by a, a, a loctician because it is intensive work, it takes a long time to do a full head of dreads, it is going to take hours and so the amount that people are paying in most cases is not completely unrealistic. So I don't think it's a terrible um, investment, especially considering if you're going to have dreadlocks for years and years and years paying a little bit at the start to have someone who has maybe more confidence than you do. Um, it, it, it's an experience there. It, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I know people have a negative view of locticians. Some people are against it because, like I said, there's a bad taste in their mouth that they're going to use a method that the, the person doesn't like or they're going to use a, a product that a person doesn't like. But in my experience, having run this blog for how many years now? Six years or something? Uh, I have come into contact with so many different dreadheads from different parts of the world and a lot of them uh, are either locticians or, you know, depending on whether they like that term or not, uh, you know, the locticians leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Some people are using a different term now, but either they are people uh, that have been working on dreadlocks the entire time, been blogging, and there have been other people that have become professional at it, um, and I've seen them become professional at it through the course of making my blog. There are locticians for every type of hair. If you're finding someone that is doing a method that you don't like or using a product that you don't like, it's up to you to research whether they're doing that before you commit to having them start your dreadlocks. You can certainly find people out there who will do exactly what you want uh, using the method and the product or no product that you want or don't want to use. And the only difference between having them do it and your friends do it is that, you know, they have the experience uh, from having done it before that they can do it more effectively either in the starting or the maintaining. Um, again, this experience can help with maintenance because uh, a lot of maintenances can be overdone. And if you're inexperienced with dreadlocks, especially if it's your you new set, you, you don't know how much maintenance is too much, you don't know how much maintenance is too hardcore, whether the tool is right, whether you're being too invasive, you, you don't know until you've damaged the dreadlocks basically. If you have a professional who is experienced, they will know um, hopefully where that level lies should you want to have your dreadlocks maintained. Again, this can take some research because some of them might not be as good as you want them to be, so you need to check people out, see your discretion. And obviously, if you're paying them for that maintenance, they might encourage you to have them maintained more than, you know, more often than you need to because they like the repeat custom, but this is not something that you can uh, make as an assumption of all locticians. You can't make this assumption that they're all gonna wax your dreads and crochet them way too tight and encourage you to have them crocheted every third day because they want to make money. It, it, it doesn't work like that. They're real people and uh, a lot of them are very professional and very experienced and can be very helpful, especially when you're totally new to the process. If you don't know anyone that's had dreadlocks before, you have no one to rely on for reliable information other than using online. And while online can be super helpful, having someone there in person um, can be a lot more reassuring in a lot of circumstances. So should you go to a loctician? Again, if you're free form, I think that's a completely different section and you already count yourself out like the obviously um, 
that the decision is made. If you're kind of on the fence when you're using a method that can be started yourself or could be started with a loctician, it's going to come down to whether you want to be more involved or not, whether it's something that you want to pay for or you don't want to pay for. And to be honest, I think the biggest thing is whether you can find someone that is experienced enough and that you trust enough to do it. Um, I don't personally come down on one side or the other these days due to I think it's difficult to make a sweeping decision as to whether you should have a professional start them or not because you 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 can't you you can't judge all professionals in the same way some are should I say more professional than others? There are people out there who work on dreadlocks uh, for their living who I would trust to work on my hair, and there are people who wouldn't, who I, who I wouldn't trust to work on my hair, shall I say? Um, because it comes down to their work, uh, what they do, kind of uh, what they've produced, and uh, the experiences people have had with them. I think you have to do a lot of research to make sure that you find someone who is going to do exactly what you want, someone whose kind of method lines up with what you're looking to get out of your dreadlocks. And if you find that person, then great. If you can't find that person, I don't think it's something that you should settle and go with someone that's going to do something you don't want because it's a big investment and it's a dreadlocks as a uh, as an investment of years for your hair potentially depending you know if you're going to see them through you should either wait for someone who is going to do exactly what you want or you should do it yourself but i think out of the arguments that i l are, are laid out not necessarily by me but i tried to I explain in the video you should probably be able to tell which side you're leaning towards based on kind of what experience you're hoping to have i have another video which comments kind of more specifically on the salon topic which is uh salon versus homemade which you can find on this channel if you're looking for more information on this if you have any questions comments or concerns you can feel free to leave me a comment where i can either respond to you here or it can lead to a new video in the future. If you're looking for like-minded people, you can find us and uh, join the group now, which we have on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash lazy dreads. Everything is linked in the description. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you again next time. Farewell. Yeah.